dawn on the 22nd of August 1914, the first British shots of the war were fired by a patrol of the 4th Royal Irish Dragoon Guards and a patrol of German cuissards. The massive armies that faced each other across Belgium and France that autumn was still solidly built on the requirements of 19th century warfare. As autumn mists became winter rain, the realisation grew that cavalry, so often the cut and thrust of the battlefields, were becoming strangely less and less effective. Puzzlement grew. Previously unheard of notions about both cavalry and warfare were now being contemplated for the first time. The Germans had struck more quickly and with greater force than was expected. What was to be the first great victory at Mons became the first retreat. Oh, the Battle of Mons took place on the 23rd and 24th of August, after which we had to retire. And there were many engagements during the retirement, especially at Liketo, where I was unfortunate enough to be thrown for six when I lost my horse. He was killed. So I attached myself I attached myself to uh, a battalion, only 80 strong, for they'd suffered very heavily at Mons. There were very few left and only one second lieutenant. And so I marched with them, having lost my horse. And the following day, a corporal of the Middlesex Regiment came up to me as I was marching with them and said, that looks like a cavalry horse over in that field. So I was over the hedge in two minutes and got up to this horse. He was uh, fit and well, except that he had a lot of blood on his neck and down his shoulder. And who evidently had been riding him had died. A cavalry squadron came in on top of us in a place called Hazelbrook. And our infantry killed every one of them. Horses and swords and lances were gone. But I think they were all drunk. They were at the coming along the coast. And they run into uh, machine gun fires and everything from out of the wood on to us. But we had a, an infantry battalion in front and they killed every one. There was horses going all over the place. And our lads was picking up the lances for souvenirs. Well, we thought that we were the best equipped army in the world, but we found we were up against it when we went there. I think at that particular time we had the fastest firing rifle in the world. We were trained to get 15 hits a minute at an object nearly a quarter of a mile away. And that wasn't too bad, but the, the other fellows were better. Was they, had, they had more machine guns, they had more everything than we had. We hadn't anything. We were, we were training for the South African War or the, the Zulu War when the Great War broke out. Sometimes you'd be covered. Sometimes you'd be with the main body. The main body was away from us, you see, uh, from the rear guard. Rear guard action, now we were fighting. And of course, they'd be changed uh, from time to time if they could do it. Sometimes they couldn't do it. It was pretty tough, all right, there's no doubt about it. We were relieved one night and we went into a place called the Pili. It was a quite small village. To have a rest because we had no rest for near night more. Night doing no more than we had no rest. And uh, we were surrounded there. The Germans got, got, must have got in the water. They, uh, they shoved in the, the, the rear guard. But we were surrounded. That's my battalion now, the second battalion. And uh, we had to fight our way through. We needn't have done so because we had a very fine commanding officer, Major Daniels, and he, so he gave us the option, would we fight through or would we, would, did we surrender? We said we'd fight through, we'd get through somewhere or another. That's, Major Daniels was killed there. Oh, there was about 50 killed and there was a lot wounded. Under heavy gunfire during the retreat from Mons, one Irish officer warned his men against eating wild berries. There might be worms in them, he warned. There was to be food enough for worms. 15,000 died before they reached the River Marne. It seemed a huge figure in August 1914. It was an omen of what was to come. In the mathematics of that war, it was a tiny omen. We went off then, right down to the Madden. 
the 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 retirement queue the whole time. We were retiring the whole time there. Bad bad the uh, fighting a bit of guard action. But uh, we got to the Madden. And we could see the lights of Paris in, there behind in front of us. Uh, we weren't very long there. There was something happened. I think uh, one of the German generals made an awful mess. One clock, I think they called him. He left a big white space. And the Irish troops copped it. And they reported it. That there was a big space between the army on the left and the army on the right of the Germans. And uh, they told the French. The French didn't seem to take any notice of it. So the, Irish, the British army went in themselves. The whole British army went, went on the move. And then the French moved. After the time, the Germans started retiring back. <laughs>